visionary, dreamers, and doers, and called by God to live, to love, to serve. Commissioned to serve. And here at FCBC, how do we say it, family? Now, those words, whether we know it or not, those are powerful words. Those are words that are going to help lead us in this season, this year of 2023. You know our battle cry for this year. I am unstoppable. Somebody needed to hear that. Somebody needs to carry that with them throughout this year. I am unstoppable. That's our theme for 2023 and for the first month of the year, January, we'll be talking about this theme. And tonight, I want to talk about uh, I Am Unstoppable, part one. If you want part two, guess what? 10 a.m. Amen. Listen, I want to go to one of the most quoted passages of Scripture in the Bible. Philippians 4, 10 through 13. I'm reading it from the Message Bible on tonight. Philippians 4, 10 through 13. These are the words of the Apostle Paul. I'm glad in God, far happier than you would ever guess. Happy that you're again showing such concern for me. Not that you ever quit praying and thinking about me. You just had no chance to show it. Actually, I don't have a sense of needing anything personally. I've learned by now to be quite content whatever my circumstances. I'm just as happy with little as with much, with much as with little. I found the recipe for being happy, whether full or hungry, hands full or hands empty. Whatever I have, wherever I am, I can make it through anything in the one who makes me who I am. Come on, beloved, let's pray. God, we made it. Somebody, oh God, that's a testimony in itself. God, we made it. That's a sermon, oh God, in three words. God, we made it. And we thank you because every step of the way, you kept reminding us that you will keep on keeping us. We celebrate tonight, oh God. We celebrate your sustaining power. We celebrate, oh God, your keeping power. We celebrate, oh God, that even in the difficult days, you reminded us that you would never leave us nor forsake us. And so we've come this far by faith, oh God, believing, trusting, leaning. God, you've seen our tears this year. You've seen the burdens we have to bear, the weights we had to carry, the distress we may have found ourselves in. But God... For every tear we shed, you gave us a thousand reasons to rejoice. We say thank you. Now, oh God, in this last night of this year, remind us that as we enter this new year that we are unstoppable. Because, God, we're going to need that. We will walk with that and live with that belief. So, God, right now, let your word go to work. And we will honor you, worship you, O oh God, because you are worthy. You are worthy. This is our prayer. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let me read that again in your hearing. Philippians 4, 10 through 13 in the Message Bible. I'm glad in God, far happier than you would ever guess. Happy that you're again showing such strong concern for me. Not that you ever quit praying and thinking about me. You just had no chance to show it. Actually, I don't have a sense of needing anything personally. I've learned by now to be quite content, whatever my circumstances. 
I'm just as happy with little as with much, with much as with little. I found the recipe for being happy, whether full or hungry, hands full or hands empty. Whatever I have, wherever I am, I can make it through anything. And the one who makes me who I am. In some translations, verse 13 says, I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. Amen? Amen. Do me a favor. Turn to your neighbor tonight and just tell him, neighbor, you are unstoppable. Come on, turn to the other neighbor and tell them, neighbor, you are unstoppable. Now tell yourself, I am unstoppable. Put your hands together and give the Lord a hand clap and praise on tonight. Amen. I am unstoppable. Just about every day, whether through Twitter or Instagram, I often get messages of people who are asking me to pray for them. Messages from people who are going through hardships every day. There's some message left in my inbox for somebody, from somebody, who's going through something. Yesterday I got a message from a young lady. And it was simple, but I'm sure it will resonate with many people here on tonight. She said, I'm asking for a small prayer request. I'm just feeling lost in this world, trying to stay strong for myself and my kids. I'm sorry for any inconvenience. I'm just feeling overwhelmed. I'm just feeling overwhelmed. Have you ever been there? in that place and space where life just seems to be overbearing and a lot to handle. In a place where it seems like no matter what you do to try to come from beneath the weight of living, that the weight seemingly gets heavier. There are those moments, those glimpses where it seems like the things that have been plaguing you will somehow subside. And in that moment when the anticipated relief gives you a moment of joy, it is as if something is snatched right from under you and you find yourself back in that space of feeling overwhelmed. Sometimes it's not even that you're lost. It's just that you don't know where you are. Have you ever been there? When you found yourself so crippled by your circumstances that it feels like it takes all of the strength that you can muster just to put one foot in front of the other and try to keep it moving. Some of us run to God thinking that somehow running to God means that we will not experience these moments. We think that somehow our faith and our belief is some kind of protective shield against life's inconsistencies. We think somehow that because we can sing songs and pray prayers that somehow our capacity to be believers mean that we, means that we will not go through anything. That's just not true. I cannot begin to tell you how many times I've had to remind folk that no matter who you are or how holy you may think you are, life doesn't stop because you drop to your knees. Life keeps on coming. 
And, and the circumstances you experience are not necessarily in correlation with whether or not you're a good or bad person. Jesus said in the book of Matthew that it rains on the just and the unjust. That the sun rises on the good and the evil. So that you cannot begin to think that somehow you're going through as some sign that God is angry. And I know there are people who play that mental manipulation to make you think that somehow when things are going wrong in your life, God is angry or you're out of alignment. No, it's called life. But these moments that seem overwhelming that cause us to question our own stability, whether we know it or not, the nuances of life. These are the moments and these are the times where we begin to really encounter who we really are. Oh, I've discovered it is easy to pretend in the sunlight, but it is difficult when the shadows are hovering. And the truth of the matter is that life happens to everybody. When life happens in these spaces, what resources are at your disposal? When you feel overwhelmed and lost, what do you lean into? Anybody can sing a good tune when you feel good. But when things begin to close in on you and you feel as though you are losing the last bit of your mind that you're holding on to, what are your resources? What do you tap into? Where's your reservoir? Don't tell me you came to church when you had money in your pocket. What do you do when everything seems to be going in the wrong direction, that's when who we are as believers ought to rise to the surface. That's when your faith comes full grown, full blown in those moments. It is when you feel lost that you find yourself in what you believe. It is when you feel broken that you feel your healing in every fiber of your very being. Can you imagine that when you feel as though you are being broken, somehow the strength of God is working out in your spirit in such a way that you find the resolve, the resource, the reservoir to be able to rebuke the difficulty and rebel against the insanity. And oftentimes, the lyrics to the songs connected to the life in your heart have a way of being sung in the moments where you ought to be silent because of the misery. But I got to help somebody here. The best song you'll ever sing may be when your back is against the wall and, and you have to tap into something deep within and you thought that those wounds were there to punish you, but the wounds help you sing songs that were able to deliver you out of your own night time. Paul was in prison waiting to hear judgment from the emperor Nero. He was confined because he believed. And there he began to write this beautiful letter to the church at Philippi. The people he helped to develop and lead and live. I can only imagine the words that he taught them when he was free. But the most powerful words he would ever give them is when he was bound. Because it is not in our freedom that we often find ourselves wanting. It is in our captivity that we need to hear the words that give life. And can I help you? It is hard to help somebody if you ain't ever been 
there. I don't want people who give words of encouragement who didn't ever have to use them on themselves. Because until you have to use them, they're just theoretical jargon. But when you share words with me that got you through, there's an authority to your words that, that, that have a weight to them that help me when I'm going through. That's why I don't understand why folk want to pretend like nothing is going on in their life. Because if you're walking, you become a witness that what you're going through has not stopped you from living. And sometimes it's your living that has to continue in your times when you feel like you're dying. Paul starts giving words of life from prison. He tells the church at Philippi, thank you for caring about me, and I'm glad that you had me on your mind, but, but don't worry about me because I know what it is to go through some things. He said, I know what it is to have, and I know what it is to not have. I know what it is to have my hands empty. I know what it is to have my hands full. I know what it is to have everything I need, and then I know what it is to have nothing at all. I know what it is to walk on the highest mountain. I know what it is to creep in the lowest valley. I know how it feels. He said, and I've learned the secret to contentment. I've learned how to maintain my composure in the chaos. One version, I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. Those are the words we often hear. I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. But, but, but I love when you begin to break it down from the Greek because it says I can, can do. It's this Greek word which means prevail. All things you find, there's not all things because Paul is not saying he can do all things because all things are not always doable. All things can't be done. I don't care how saved you are. Jump off the George Washington Bridge and ask yourself, can you do all things? No, that doesn't mean anything. Keep the context of what he's saying. He said, I can do all things through Christ, or I can prevail through any circumstance. Oh, and that's the difference. In other words, I can prevail through any circumstance through the one who's kept me, who's been keeping me, and who will keep me. There is nothing that can change my disposition and my commitment. I can prevail through any situation. I can prevail through any circumstance. I'm going to repeat that for somebody. I can prevail prevail through any situation. I can prevail through any circumstance. I'm going to say it if somebody gets it. I can prevail through any situation. I can prevail through any circumstance. You ain't hearing me. I can prevail through any situation. I can prevail through any circumstance. Why? Because I am unstoppable. I am unstoppable because although I might be in a mess, the mess don't make me. I am unstoppable. I can speak those words in the midst of chaos and remind myself how strong I am. I am unstoppable in my circumstance does not dictate the level of my confidence in God in my worst situations. Can I tell you something? When you get to a point where all you can say is, God, help me. And sometimes when you say that, you don't look for the magic bullet right away. You just got to just say it to help your mind get right. God, help me. And then you get to the point where you then acknowledge, God, I know you see me. And then you say, God, I know you've been working on my behalf. And I thank you. Paul said, I can go through any situation through and with the one who keeps me. You are unstoppable. You need to remember that at the dawn of this new year. 
you are unstoppable. You need to get up every morning and remind yourself of that. I am unstoppable. Now, I just said this is part one. I'm going to let you get out so you can get to the place you need to go to. <laughs> I'll see you tomorrow morning. But I want to share four things. If you want the rest, you got to get them tomorrow. <laughs> then I think are common with people who are unstoppable. One, I, here's what I'll tell you. Unstoppable people believe in themselves. Do you hear that? Unstoppable people believe in themselves. I shared something several months ago as a, 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 a little, I don't know, story, anecdote I've read. It said, the bird sitting on a tree is never afraid of the branch breaking because its trust is not in the branch but in its own wings. Oh, you didn't miss, you, you missed that. The bird don't sit there worried about the branch because the bird knows it can fly. See, when you believe in yourself and know what you can do, you don't worry about things collapsing beneath you because you know you have the power and capacity to still thrive in the midst of everything in any circumstance. You are braver than you think, more talented than you know, and are capable of more than you could ever imagine, and you have to be the one who believes in you more than anybody else. You have to believe in yourself so much that you don't need any applause or any praise from anybody, that you got to believe in yourself so much that you fall forward in the power of your own capacity and ability aided and escorted by God that you got to believe in yourself so much that you don't need validation and affirmation from people who are incapable of affirming their own selves. You believe in yourself so much that you don't go around chasing things that only destroy you in the midnight hour. You believe in yourself so much that you're not afraid to walk through hell and come out on the other side. You believe in yourself so much that there's nothing that can ever come against you. You believe in yourself so much that in the midst of your chaos, you can stand flat-footed and declare no weapon formed against me shall prosper. You believe in yourself so much that your very presence is an assault against the enemy. You believe in yourself so much that the folk who don't like you ought to get terrified when you show up. You believe in yourself so much that demons start shaking when you enter the room. You believe in yourself so much that every day you wake up, you look for walls to tumble. You look for mountains to move. Unstoppable people believe in themselves. Look at your name and tell them, believe in yourself. Yeah. Unstoppable people not only believe in themselves. Can I tell you this? Unstoppable people don't talk, they take action. I hope you get this tonight. No, no, no. They know how to make big decisions. They know how to take leaps of faith over and over and over and over again. They do not let procrastination be their way of working. They do not rest in their excuses. They are relentless. They know how to make things happen. They know how to make things come alive. They know how to take dreams and visions and put flesh and blood and bone to it. They know how to take action. Unstoppable people are relentless when it comes to getting things done that they set their minds to. And God help anybody who stands in their way trying to stop them from getting to the place that God has called them to. Sometimes you got to remind some people who you are who try to stand between you and your vision, you and your dream, you and your destiny, you and your future. Uh-uh. Why? Because unstoppable people take action. They tell folk who doubt them, listen, I'm not just a visionary and a dreamer. I am a... Oh. Okay, I'm going to let you go. 
Unstoppable people believe in themselves. Unstoppable people take action. And here's what I like. Unstoppable people know how to persevere and are persistent. You want to get an unstoppable person riled up? Tell them what they can't do. You, you, you want to really jumpstart their movement? Try to put a barrier in front of them. No. They are persistent. It doesn't, because can I tell you this? It doesn't matter how talented you are, how intelligent you are, how creative you are. If you are not persistent, and if you do not know how to persevere, then your talent and your intelligence and your creativity doesn't mean much. If the slightest sign of a storm makes you back down, if the slightest sign of adversity makes you turn the other way, then that means you don't have the mental fortitude to be unstoppable. This is a season where you have to become mentally tough. And if you have not become mentally tough in the past two years, I don't know what else it will take. Just getting up in the morning made you tough. Just making sense out of your life made you tough. Just being able to get from the home to the supermarket and back safe made you tough. Stop acting like you're not stronger than you know yourself to be. Do not wallow in self-pity. No. You've had to persevere through some of the worst days of your life. You had to find a reason to keep on going and a reason to rejoice in you. How do I know? You're here tonight. You're still alive. And that said something. Unstoppable people know how to persevere. Here's another thing I learned. Unstoppable people are fully committed to their goals. Hold on. Unstoppable people know this, that the only one who can stop them from reaching their goals themselves. Unstoppable people don't give people the power to stop them. Whatever goal you've placed before yourself in this coming year, be unstoppable. Achieve it. Go after it. Reach for it. And can I tell you this? I know we like making resolutions. No, I'm talking about goals. Don't set a goal that's easy. Set a goal that terrifies you. That scares you. The kind of goal where you don't even know how you can get it done. Because the truth is, if you heard Paul, it ain't just you who's going to get it done anyway. When was the last time you set a goal in front of yourself that scared you? Or you just kept setting goals in lanes that were achievable because you doubted yourself? Oh, a whole lot of us are wallowing in mediocrity because we dare not go beyond what we think we can handle. And so we rather be underachievers. No. I'm going to say it again. You've come through too much, been through too much. You've done too much. You've overcome too much. To not be passionate about the goals you set in front of you. And remember, if you're going to set goals, then you can't undermine your goals with self-doubt. You got to trust it. So unstoppable people, what? They believe in themselves. They take action. They are persistent and they persevere. They are committed to their goals. And, and I said four, but I'm going to give you one more to go home with. Unstoppable people surround themselves with unstoppable people. You, you caught that? Maybe 2023 is a year you sever some ties with people who ain't trying to do nothing, who ain't trying to go nowhere, who are content doing the same old thing every single day. No, I want folk in my life who push me to be my better self. I don't want folk who try to pull me back and pull me down because they're intimidated by my strength. No. You got to start surrounding yourself by people who want to climb just as high as you do. 
who want to reach for visions and dreams just as much as you do. You got to make up in your mind. And can I tell you something? Sometimes losing people is the price you pay for being unstoppable. No. Here's what I discovered in my life. That's right. Unstoppable people are unstoppable because they've learned how to reimagine what victory is. Too often we think victory is about winning. But then the question becomes, what is really winning? See, no one would look at Paul in prison and think he was winning. You in jail, held captive, facing a date with the executioner. You're losing. No, he was winning. But you have to reimagine what a victory is. Victories are often associated with what he said, prevailing. In other words, if the thing I'm going through does not destroy me, I'm winning. If the hell I'm catching cannot break me, I'm prevailing. Y'all didn't get that. See, that young woman who sent me that message yesterday, I told her, you watched service tonight. She said, I feel lost and overwhelmed. I'm trying to be strong for my kids. Not realizing that, that she was winning because in that message, she never indicated she was surrendering. It's okay to acknowledge when you're going through, but know that you're going through it. Paul says, I can prevail through anything. It doesn't mean that you won't need to prevail because prevailing means you're going through something. It's just that what you're going through will not destroy you. And you have to remember that. So this year of 2023, every day you get up, start your day off with your battle cry. I am unstoppable. In fact, just tell yourself that right now. I am unstoppable. I am a mountain mover. I am a water walker. I am unstoppable. There is nothing that can stand in my way that I cannot overcome. And how do I know? Because I've already overcome. I am unstoppable. There is no barrier that can prevent me from achieving the things I place before me because I've already lived the life of an achiever. I am unstoppable. And you must remember that today. You need to know that in your heart. So often we shrink back in those moments when our fear rises. We get close to the thing we prayed about and then pull back because we don't think it's for us. We've had so many disappointments and so many setbacks and so many letdowns. We sit around waiting for the other shoe to drop. Oh, I know I'm talking to somebody. I mean, just because you have been through it doesn't mean it will be forever. You are worthy of the things you've dreamt about. Stop talking yourself out of it. God, I want love, and love shows up, and you start talking about who didn't love you. I want peace, and then when peace shows up, all you can talk about is the hell you're going through. If you're going to cry out for it, then open your hands to receive it. You are unstoppable. The day you were born, 
divinity filled your lungs. took people convincing you that you were not unstoppable and you bought into the lie that you were least that you were unfit that you were flawed that the bad things that have happened in your life come because well that's what always happens to you no you got to rebuke that lie from gate mm -mm. my situation is turning now right now it is turning right now I will not rehearse the narratives that try to deplete me it's turning right now and I will meet my vision along the way. I'll bump into my dreams in the morning and stand next to my breakthrough in the evening. Right now. And if you know that, then start walking like it and talking like it. Don't walk around with that band on your wrist, but it ain't in your heart. I am unstoppable. Don't say it and then get scared when you step outside this sanctuary. I am unstoppable. Because when you declare that over and over and over and over again, you'll be surprised at how things start orchestrating. I got to share this, and I won't give all the details, but Dr. Lena knows we were in an executive team meeting. She was talking about some monies that were spent for the Hope Center. And we were able to do certain things because a certain corporation had given us money and had told us that they were not going to renew that money that enabled us to do some strong programming at the Hope Center. And I said, in that meeting, I said, put it out there. Say what you want. I told her in the meeting. Say what you want. If you want it done again, say it. Say it. Say it. And she started saying it. And as soon as she started saying it, I ain't making this, I'm telling you. She got an email from the corporation that said they would not renew, who then said they were going to do it changed their mind, turned it around. Because when you start putting stuff out there and believing it, the universe has no choice but to conspire with your words. You want to be whole, say it. You want to soar, say it. You want to be unstoppable, declare it. And I promise you, nothing will be impossible for you. Because if nobody else is tired of you being, well, no, rehearsing those negative narratives, you ought to be tired. Beloved, you are unstoppable. Stand to your feet tonight. Let this be the year where your words activate the dreams. Let your imagination lead the way. Don't be afraid of your power. Believe it. Know it. 
when you leave this sanctuary tonight, don't walk with your head down. Move forward like you know things are going to start happening this year. And you may be saying, Pastor, 2022 was a blessing. I did things I could not imagine. Don't stop dreaming and don't stop declaring. You keep on putting it in the atmosphere. And know this, it may not happen the way you want it to happen, but be open to it happening. I want to pray tonight. I want to pray for those of us who can be honest enough to say that at times we're intimidated by ourselves. You ever been scared by your own power? Because in this new season, this new year, you cannot be intimidated by your gifts anymore. So if you're here tonight and you've had those times where you were shaken by your own giftedness, I want you to come down here tonight, overwhelmed by your own strength. Uh-uh. You still act in surprise when certain doors start opening. Look at who you are. In fact, you ought not be surprised. You ought to expect certain things to start happening, especially when you know you are unstoppable. this. I ask for those to come down who get intimidated by their own strength. Which means that those of you who came down <laughs> know you're strong. <laughs> who are intimidated by their giftedness. It means you know you're gifted. So stop playing small when you know it already. Stop trying to make barriers when you're unstoppable. Stop trying to build walls that you already know you can tear down. No. 2023 is your year to be an unstoppable force. Everything you put your hands to will excel. Everywhere you go, people will have to take an account of your presence. Every attempt to slow you down will only give you more strength. You're unstoppable. Come on, beloved, let's pray. God, thank you. Thank you, God. God, thank you for those who have come who stand in affirmation of their strength, their gifts, their creativity. God, thank you for those who've come, oh God, who had the courage to say they were courageous. God, thank you. The truth is, oh God, we all have learned too well that the only thing that can really stop us is ourselves. So God, we're weary of getting in our own way. We're weary of talking ourselves out of our best moments and 
talking ourselves out of our best opportunities for breakthrough. God, we're tired and we're done with that. We will be in alignment with our strength. We will be in alignment with our gifts. We will be in alignment, oh God, with your presence. We know, oh God, that we can prevail through anything that comes our way because we've already seen it. We've done it. We've achieved it. We've overcome it. And God, there are times we get weary. and times we feel overwhelmed. and times we feel lost. But that does not discount who you made us to be. That life circumstances do not change who we are. We belong to you. We are your sons. We are your daughters. We are your children. God, thank you. Thank you. God, we will enter this new year with renewed energy. Our energy will be infectious. Everything we do will be filled with the energy that comes from being in alignment with your presence. And oh God, everyone who comes in contact with us in this season will feel the might of your presence. We stand in agreement with that, oh God. God, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Now, oh God, as we prepare to enter this new season, we do it fortified, knowing, oh God, that we were built for this moment, that the things we went through in 2022 were equipping us for this new year, that we have everything we need to accomplish, everything we need to let dreams come to fruition, everything we need to see visions come alive. You have equipped us, oh God, and now we will walk in the fullness of who we are. Lord, we thank you and we honor you and we cannot wait to see how you get the glory out of us in this year. We honor you, Lord. We thank you, God. And we stand in agreement with you. And we trust you. And we believe you. And it's in your name we pray. And we say amen. Amen. Come on, put your hands together and give the Lord a hand clap.